Most of my clients and course members are not getting near enough protein in their diet to reach their health goals. Whether it's improving your strength, reducing your risk of fractures, or maintaining lean muscle mass when you're losing weight so that you have a higher metabolism and a greater chance that that weight will stay off, you need to be eating enough protein. In this video, I'm going to break down the pros and cons of animal and plant-based protein when it comes to weight loss and disease prevention. If you like this video and want to see more like it, please be sure that you give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe to my channel, and turn the bell on to get notified every time I have a new video. Real quick, if you missed the last video about protein, you may want to go check that out because in it I covered frequently asked questions like why is getting enough protein important as you age? Is protein really important for weight loss? How much protein do you need? And how much protein should you have at each meal? I will link to that video in the description. Before I dive into plant versus animal based protein, I wanted to review the difference between a complete and incomplete protein. You may have heard of the term complete protein, and that means that the food source has all of the essential amino acids. Think about amino acids as protein building blocks. There are two categories of blocks, essential, which are amino acids that must be consumed from the diet and you can't make them in your body, and then non-essential, and those are amino acids that don't need to be consumed from the diet because they can be made in the body from carbohydrates and other amino acids. Animal protein sources like meat, fish, poultry, eggs, and dairy are considered to be complete sources of protein because they contain enough of all of the essential amino acids that your body needs to function effectively. Most plant protein sources are considered incomplete, either because they're low in or they're missing an essential amino acid. But there are plenty of plant-based protein options that are considered complete, such as quinoa, soy products, amaranth, buckwheat, Ezekiel bread, spirulina, which is a type of algae, hemp and chia seeds, yeast, and a combination of rice and beans. Let's get into the different nutritional benefits of plant versus animal protein. Here are the animal protein pros. Animal protein sources are higher in certain nutrients than plants. If you're a vegan or vegetarian, you will want to be sure to pay close attention to your food options and see if you can add plant-based options higher in these nutrients or if you need to supplement. Vitamin B12, vitamin D, DHA, which is a type of omega-3 fatty acid, heme iron, zinc, and creatine. Here are your plant protein pros. Fiber is going to slow the digestion of your food and thus slow the blood sugar and insulin response. It's also going to keep you feeling full, so definitely a great idea to increase your fiber intake when you're losing weight. Fiber is also good for your GI and cardiovascular health. Next is antioxidants, vitamins, and minerals. Those are going to help reduce cellular damage and prevent disease. Plant-based protein also helps reduce your inflammation, and less inflammation means reduced recovery time following an injury or a workout and reduced risk of disease. And lastly, it has improved blood flow properties, so better circulation will improve your physical performance and reduce healing time. Now let's talk about the cons of animal protein. Essentially, they lack all of the great disease-fighting nutrients and fiber of plant-based protein. They also contain some inflammatory substances. Among others, animal proteins are higher in inflammatory compounds like TMAO and AGEs, and those have been shown to increase your inflammation and your risk for chronic disease. There's a lot of conflicting opinions in the research about meat, particularly red meat. In general, red meat includes beef, lamb, pork, and goat. A good rule of thumb is the less processed your food, the better, and that includes meat. So I recommend that you're limiting processed meat in your diet, and that would include things like hot dogs, bacon, ham, sausage, and some deli meats, and opt for more natural options that have fewer additives and salt. Personally, I do eat meat, but I follow more of a plant-based diet, and the more research I do, 
the more I find myself eating less meat, especially less red and processed meats. I typically don't like to eliminate a food from my diet. I just recognize that there are healthier alternatives and try to choose those more often than not. So how about the plant protein cons? If you're a vegan or vegetarian, you may be missing out on some key nutrients from animal sources. So you'll want to do your research and ensure that you're eating a well-balanced diet. If you're looking to go lower carb, animal sources tend to be more concentrated compared with most plant sources to help you stay in your carb count goal. I did find a great protein powder that's plant-based that I link to in the description below. It's my favorite. And there are other ways to concentrate your plant-based protein, but remember that you're going to still need a variety of plant sources to get the complete protein profile that you need so that you have all of those essential amino acids. So here's a quick list of good sources of plant-based protein, beans, lentils, tofu, edamame, tempeh, chickpeas, kidney beans, peanuts, almonds, spirulina, quinoa, some plant-based protein powders, hemp seeds, and chia seeds. Here are some good sources of animal protein. Chicken, beef, pork, fish, shrimp, tuna, cottage cheese, string cheese, eggs, protein powders, some protein bars, and some Greek yogurts. The bottom line is that plant-based protein will help reduce inflammation and improve your overall health more than animal-based protein. Some animal-based protein sources are healthier for you than others. So if you do eat animal protein, just try to eat more of the healthy stuff and less of the unhealthy stuff. So tell me in the comments, what was your single greatest insight or takeaway from this video? I love hearing from you and that feedback helps me make content that you want to watch. Don't forget to check out the resources in the description. And if you like this video, please engage with it so that more people can see it. Be sure to hit that like button, share it with your friends, subscribe to my channel and turn the bell on to get notified every time I post a new video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.